Is it true that uh, during the off season you carry that softball around with you everywhere and actually go to sleep with it in your hand? Uh, unfortunately, no, <laughs> not not in the off season. <clears throat> Explain I to our should, listeners but... what what the deal is with that. Because I was just going to ask. We, we've what... had a lot of questions from our listeners about what's the deal with the big softball between innings. The reason for the softball is because some of the baseballs feel big sometimes in my hand, uh, so I hold a softball so they feel smaller or feel normal in my hand uh it's basically i'm just using it to trick my mind uh into believing that that the that the baseball is smaller than it actually is but uh this last season i guess i didn't need it as much because the balls already felt a little bit smaller than they normally do but it's just a, a habit i guess uh you know so i hold on to that softball to make the baseballs feel a little smaller Marco, have you named the softball a la Tom Hanks in uh, Castaway? You know, no, <laughs> Wilson, yeah, Wilson or is Wilson, there, right? <laughs> yeah, is the, is the ball called Rawlings or something? Or do you guys talk to each no, other? No, it, it, it is a uh, eastbound and down uh, ball. <laughs> so Ken, Kenny Powers is on it, so I can call it either Kenny or Mr. Powers. Um, but I guess I haven't. Uh, yeah, but it is my Kenny Powers baseball or softball. Um, it used to have a, a picture of him on it and, it, and it said something on it that I can't repeat. But <laughs> we can do a good job of bleeping if you'd like. <laughs> well, you're you're something out, so gotcha. we got it. Gotcha, cool. <laughs> you got to get him to but, sign that for you. I imagine uh, oh, he's man, a big baseball that'd be fan. So cool. But the only problem is I've had this ball for so long that picture on it and the uh, actual writing is completely gone away. So so this is the same ball? This is the same yeah. one? Like, this, this is the exact same ball I've had. Wow. Um, I, I, honest, I don't know how long I've had it, but maybe five, six years. Would it look like Tulo's old uh, glove? <laughs> Does it have well, the same? If, I mean, if you look at my glove, it's basically the same thing. It, uh <laughs> I've had my glove for God, almost 12 years now. Man, Marco, a... you realize you baseball players are a little weird, aren't you? Yeah, you guys are strange folks. Uh, we're very, very <laughs> weird. Marco, uh, there were times last season where you did not pitch as well as you would like. And, of course, yeah. when that happens, people start to assume what the problem is and why you're not pitching well and rumors come out and this and that. You recently uh, were on an interview, I think, on MLB Radio or XM Radio where you mentioned about the lack of sleep that you were getting during the season. Uh, was your idea to, to come public with that maybe partially because you've come to grips with it and how much of it had to do with maybe you were just sick and tired of people assuming what was wrong? Well, yeah, I, uh, you know, I, I've been asked a million times what happened and then what changed? How did you get, you know, how did you all of a sudden uh, figure things out and pitch much better? But, yeah, you know, I just kept hearing these questions and I knew this question would come up again. <laughs> um, but it, it is what it is, you know. I, I, I struggled with it. I uh, It was a hard time. And like I said, it was a, a lot of little things. Uh, it snowballed into one big thing and, uh, you know, it, it kept me from sleeping. Um, and it's tough to go out there, you know, especially when <laughs> you're laying in bed and you see the sun come up and you got a day game you got to pitch in. Uh, so that, that was one of the outings I had. Uh, I, I believe I walked seven guys that day. So <laughs> it, it, it obviously, um, it'll mess with you and, it's unfortunate that I had to go through something like that, and uh, but it is past me now, and you know I I've been sleeping great, and I have been for you know for months now, uh, but unfortunately these things do happen, and you know I, I didn't think something like this would ever happen to me, but they happen, and you know I, I the strong the the mind is extremely powerful, so I and you know that, that's. When, when you can't get it to shut off, that's what happens. <laughs> you know, Matt and I, Matt and I are both uh, anxiety battlers. We uh, have a lot of our listeners that that deal with mental health issues. We've had many shows dedicated specifically to that, and I think that there is a perception out there that when you are a professional athlete and you make millions of dollars, that you know you're superhuman and you're immune to this kind of thing. But at the end of the day. Uh, you guys all have your own personal issues, and you're you're human beings just like the rest of us. 
Uh, 100%. And, you know, it, and I know you're right. You know, we, we do get paid a lot of money to do this stuff, but no one realizes uh, all the travel and how long we are away from our families and, um, you know, all the criticism you have to take, which is it's, it's all part of it. And I, I get it. And that's what, you know, and I love this game so much. Um, that's why we all do it. But th- there are the things that factor in and sometimes you can't control them. Uh, so, you know, for me, obviously, I, I talked about being traded and then struggling. Um, and, you know, I, I'm also a hypochondriac. Like, I mean, this is basically what started was I thought I had an illness and, you know, I might die from it. And it turned out to be nothing. But this is the second time this has happened to me. And I just got to stay away from that, I guess. I, I can't read WebMD because I have a bump or, you know, some a lymph node pops up or something because according to WebMD, you have cancer and to, to everything, no matter what it is. <laughs> so, you know, I, 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 I get that from my mom. She's the exact same way. So, uh, you know, I just can't, I can't buy into anything and, and I got to stay off the internet and especially WebMD cause it, it's, it's not good. And, uh, um, so, so I have, and you know, I don't know, but things are great now. Family's great. That's all that matters, right? Absolutely. Marco, this makes me smile a little bit because my next question is a complete opposite to what you just said because I was going to ask you, or I was going to define you as a grinder. Uh, head coach of the Toronto Maple Leafs, Mike Babcock, refers to someone that can you know, work through pain and suffering and still, and still perform as a grinder. Marco, you pitched through a herniated disc. <laughs> That's called being a grinder, man. Like, how do you pitch through a herniated disc? Well, you know, uh, it's it's crazy because it, it's kind of an oxymoron here. But you talk about the, your mentality, right? Having a strong mindset. And that's basically what I am on the mound. Uh, but obviously, it also backfired on me with the whole sleeping issue. Uh but I was still out there, you know, I, I, I want to make every single start. So I know mentally I am strong. Um, I, I, you know, I, I let a few things get to me and, and, you know, got stressed out and was struggling with sleep, but I was still out there, you know, when I was on the mound and I, and I hate even talking about this because I feel like I'm making an excuse, which I'm not, if, if that were the case, I just wouldn't have pitched during that time, but I want to, I want to be out there every five days uh, you know, uh, it, it, it's got to be something extremely bad for me not to be out there. So if I do miss time, it's because it's physically impossible for me to be out there. Um, but, you know, I, I, I did have those games where my velo was way down and, uh, you know, I, I couldn't even bend over to pick up the baseball, but I somehow got through them. But, you know, it, it I like being out there. I, you know, it is my job to be out there every five days and I want to, I want to be out there every five days, uh, no matter what's going on with anything, you know, whether it's physical, mental, whatever. Uh, I want to be out there every five days and, and do my job. One of our listeners, his name is Usman Ahmed. He actually sent a video to Barry, which I believe Barry forwarded to you. Hi, Marco. My name is Usman and I'm a big fan of you. I actually wake up at 4 a.m. in the morning to watch the Blue Jays. Um, anyways, I was super excited when I heard that you were going to be an out of the park. I'm a very loyal listener of this show and I'm actually friends with Barry Davis. This hat you see is he actually sent me this hat all the way to Pakistan. So I just wanted you to know that you have a very very big fan in Pakistan. This is the sort of dedication. And when we talked about having you on, he was so passionate about you have to send this video 
over to Marco and show him how much his tenacity means to me. What does it feel like to get a video like that from someone who's living in Pakistan watching games at 5 a.m.? Uh, you know, to, to have a fan is, means the world to me. Um, this is someone that's going way out of his way just to make it a point to watch our games. And, and for him to, to be a fan not only of the Blue Jays but a fan of mine uh, means the world, you know. It, it's, it's something special that, you know, it's hard. It's hard for this guy to get games out there and uh, obviously so far away. Um, but for him to go out of his way and actually make a little video and explain his situation and, and how much of a Blue Jay fan he is uh, means a lot. And those are the, school, the the cool little stories you hear about, you know, once in a while. Um, and we're fortunate enough to have millions of fans. But, uh, you know, th this guy is going way out of his way to make it a point to watch our game. So it's an extremely cool situation. And and I'm glad he's able to, watch, you know, get, get our, our games out there and, and, and cheer us on. Marco, this guy wasn't even allowed to buy himself a baseball glove because – in his country, cricket's the game, and, and to explain to his parents that he wanted to spend money on a baseball glove, it just wouldn't fly for him. So we ended up sending right. him a glove, a ball, and a hat. And not only does he use it now, but I think he does a pretty good Marco Estrada impersonation. Yeah, <laughs> he does. Um, well, Barry, are you going to be in spring training? I Well, here's the deal. Uh, I'd like to go. Uh, I just uh, all I need is a, a place to stay, a flight, uh, and some media credentials. Other than that, I'm all set. <laughs> but so no, there's no barriers uh, at all. You know what? I, I I would like to get down to Florida, and I do plan to somehow uh, at the end of February come down there. Well, if you get down there, you know I'll have a few things for that kid, and uh, we'll, we'll send it out to him just because you know I, I know you sent him a glove, uh, but I'll send him one of mine. Probably much yeah, better than yeah. the cheap one I sent him. That's for sure. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll get him one of mine and uh, maybe get some baseballs or something out to him. But uh, yeah, I'd like to hand you over some stuff, and if you could uh, send it for me, I'd I'd appreciate that. One hundred. I'm sure he would. He would too. <laughs> you don't mind signing one of those balls for him, I bet, don't you? Oh well, that's what I'm talking about.